there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM with even more exclusive content with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free, personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. So for nearly two decades, Brian Schmidt and Mobile Solutions have been providing the industry with resources, with training, and more importantly, solutions to help out even the most modern fabricator get the job done and do it in a stylish, brilliant, modern way. Today, folks, I hope you're dialed in because we have a great show ahead. This workshop, we've got the man himself, Brian Schmidt, in the studio live from his workshop in Arizona. And he's gonna go over a couple of the main kits that are the hottest thing right now for fabricators everywhere. This is CMA Workshop presented by Sirius XM, Mobile Solutions, and it starts now. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to this CMA workshop presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu, and it's in the name, y'all. It's a workshop. What does that mean? That means you are about to be treated to a process, something that you're going to learn that's being shown to you by an expert. And in this case, we're talking about Brian Schmidt from Mobile Solutions, who, of course, just came off an incredible inaugural event that they pulled off called Master Tech Expo down at Mesa, Arizona, that we're going to talk about for sure. So to get things started, let's make sure we get in the studio with us. They're Canadian distributor for all things mobile solutions from BB Distribution, Mr. Jaron from BB. What's going on, Jaron? How's it going, Ben? Long time no see. Oh, well, I think we've been on a few together for sure, <laughs> but this one is a little bit different because we're in for a treat today, aren't we, Jaron? Yes, this one's definitely going to be an exciting one. Anytime Brian comes on, it's definitely an exciting and you're going to learn lots. Um, a teacher, he certainly is a master of the craft for sure. Uh, and you know, when it comes to the mobile solutions lineup of products, they are such an incredible resource for fabricators everywhere. So, I'd like to hear from you. Why is it important that that BB has mobile solution products within their catalog? Well, like you said, for any fabricator out there, mobile solutions is definitely a great partner to have. Uh, it's an, I think, a necessity when you're fabbing in the shop making custom panels everything anything from router bits to some of the consumables like glues tapes and then his wide array of templates for sure they're a must in the shop uh i, I must say you know i've uh, obviously spent uh, some screen time with many different fabricators from all over the place and i've always seen these templates in the background in the shop so obviously they're being used uh we, we're being treated today because um brian himself will be demoing uh, in real time live with us, how some of these kits and products work so that you guys, the dealers and the installers who are tuning in can get a better sense of, you know, their purpose and why you need them. Um, but I think what we're going to start with, Jaron, is, you know, a little show happened. I just mentioned Master Tech Expo. That was kind of like a, like out of the blue, totally unique experience that came out uh, that Brian was part of. His, it was his brainchild and he, and he made it happen. So real quick, your thoughts on Master Tech Expo. Master Tech Expo was definitely a huge event, brought in lots of people, lots of vendors. Brian handpicked some of those vendors that were just amazing. I think people went down there with a willingness to learn, and they left with so much knowledge from that expo. I've heard nothing but the same type of comments and the same type of feedback. Um, in fact, before we get Brian on, we got a little video. For those of you who didn't make it, I know he's going to tell you all about what's happening in in the, the second version 2.0, which will happy, happen in 2023. But let's give you a taste of what you missed 
with this video that covers the first Master Tech Expo that went on this spring in Arizona. I don't even know where to begin on how many faces and legends of the game that I recognize from that quick video clip. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and invite the man himself into the studio with us. Uh, let's bring in the president of Mobile Solutions and promoter of the Master Tech Expo, Mr. Brian Schmidt. Hey, good morning. Hey, how are you guys? On? How are you doing, Brian? Doing great. Um, let me start by first saying thank you for making the time today. Obviously, we know you have a busy, busy schedule, but let me be the first on air. I think we did a, we did do a show, a 12 Volt Insider from the show, where we got a ch chance to kind of talk to you fresh right in the moment. But now that you had, you know, a couple of weeks and months to kind of reflect on that whole experience um, from Master Tech, I'd, I'd love to hear, you know, your thoughts now that you've had a chance to kind of, you know, think about what just what you just made happen, man. Yeah, you know, it's just kind of it's interesting to think about in retrospect how big the show was and uh, you know all the important pe people there and just that collaboration in the industry it was a lot of fun uh you know the idea was to really kind of blend different worlds together and have this fabricator 12 volt uh industry to kind of come together and that's what makes the magic happen at this event it's it's definitely special and interesting i mean we had some amazing uh presenters we had uh uh, Dave can dig from uh, can dig it from bitch and rides a TV show and Mark Fakuda and Wayne Harris and you know a lot of uh, you know old time guys celebrities uh, and sharing their knowledge and some of their expertise it was is a lot of fun the classes uh, are really structured very differently where you have to go through a full track of four sessions which build upon each other consecutively. And we just made it a lot of fun. You know, the the actual, the actual exhibit time was like Circus Soleil. We had a build off going on. We had all this stuff happening and the vendors were challenged to show the tech. They absolutely had to show the tech in their booths. It wasn't just a literature, uh, check out our displays. Uh, it was it was for the techs. Uh, and we did have some stuff for the, the owners, so, some sales side and some ownership side as well, which I think is super important. So. A, a lot of fun, uh, learned a lot uh, for year one. Uh, so, you know, Ben, year two, we you know that we're going to push the envelope. You know that we're going to I'm almost go... scared to ask you, Brian, <laughs> like what do you have cooking up for year two at this stage in the game? We're here at the end of June, almost July. And I know, if I know Brian Schmidt, you've already been hard with the pen and pad coming up with some crazy plan. So I may as well just ask you, um, you know, A, what did you learn? And B, what can we expect moving forward going into year two? Yeah, I think that, you know, we learned the, the recipe, what worked and and how to refine that so we can maximize that time. And moving forward, I, what you guys are going to see is is a, a bigger scaled uh, event. We've actually contracted the entire city block. I'll just say that. <laughs> and we have we actually have the mayor of Mesa 
is going to kick off the event with his opening remarks. That's how big it is. So it's it's going to be huge. Um, I can't tell you just yet who the the keynotes are, but I will tell you it's some of the biggest names in automotive industry. And we'll just kind of leave it at that. Uh, the classes are expanded on. And, uh, you know, from an attendee standpoint, guys, look, we're feeding you from breakfast to dinner. Everything is all inclusive. So you don't have to have, uh, you know, an issue or I got to go get food or we're going to leave to a restaurant. We've got it covered and it's awesome. You know, uh, you know, just food throughout the event. We'll have a huge barbecue at night and some other amazing events that we're going to kind of uh, release throughout the year, uh, you know, kind of building up to this. But it'll be a lot of fun. I guarantee you, you guys have never seen anything like this. So we're we're super excited. I have been kind of quiet about it lately, uh, but I've been very hard at work and diligently working with our team to kind of construct this next event. We, we're we going to do one a year and it's going to be as, you know, as big and as awesome as we can make it. And that's our goal. I have two comments here, Brian, if you, if I may, number one, um, first of all, the great news is we're going to have many opportunities between now and then here on CMA networks to get you on and squeeze out of you all these nuggets that you're going to put forth. And as the show evolves, moving ahead to 2023, but many opportunities for Brian to come back on and, and tell us all these exciting news. Uh, number two, I want to reiterate the feedback that I've received, Brian, outside of our conversations, but from actual, you know, fabricators and installers that invested their money, their shop's money and time to come down and experience your event. The takeaway and the feedback that I've heard from these individuals has been nothing short of spectacular. And they're so amped, you know, they realize what they were a part of and it was something special. And that first one will always be that first one. Um, but I think what they're looking forward to most is what you're going to do to crank up that experience, that dial ever so, you know, even higher for the next one, uh, because I think it's only going to get bigger as the word spreads. Oh, I'll let you comment on that, Jaron. That's what I, that's, <laughs> that's what I've been hearing from the fabricators. Yeah, I, I'm sure it will get bigger and bigger and better and better. Brian will keep layering on top of it adding more and more and more all right he's, he's definitely that type of guy i think uh, it's there. a little over the top and honestly hard to keep up with but we got to stay on top of it because the, <laughs> that's the way brian rolls um just for the record brian where can people find information uh and to stay in touch with what's going on with master tech so uh i think we got a little bit of a delay on our our signal here i don't know if we can shut down some Wi-Fi on our side. We might have a lot of computers up and running here. But uh, to answer the question, uh, mastertechexpo.com is the best resource. That's the, the website. And we're constantly updating it. Don't think it just is uh, stagnant. We're going to be rolling kinds of information uh, for you guys that are thinking about travel for even next year. Uh, it does fill up. So we're, we actually have a few hotels already on there partners i think we're gonna have and mesa actually has been amazing our city here uh and the city planners have really worked with this we'll have i think six hotels uh and ben we might even have a shuttle that travels between all the hotels ah. and picks people up in the morning at night to drop people off and pick them up in the morning because kind of like ces used to with the, uh, the buses uh we'll kind of do that as well because the event is so big not just one hotel can accommodate beautiful um, shifting gears, Brian, I mean, obviously we're going to continue talking about master tech over the season as the months progress today, we've, we've got you in your, you know, your shop for a very specific purpose. And that is, uh, to demonstrate mobile solution, uh, solutions or tools or kits or whatever that it is that you have in mind. Um, but before we do that, why do you think it's so important that fabricators today in today's market, stay in touch with the different tools that mobile solutions provides? and stay up to date with what's going on? You know, that's a great question. And I find myself, you know, when I'm in the, in a project, which we, you know, we do a lot of projects here and, and constantly trying to figure out ways. Uh, you know, there's always, you come time block of, yes, I can do it, but I know there's a, a faster or an easier and so, you know, when, when I kind of roll out these these tools and this development behind it, it's got to be clever, it's got to be smart, uh, and it's got to 
time and, and really give better product. And those are the goals in, in mind. So, you know, whether you have a CNC, a laser, or years of experience, we want tools that help you increase your game and buy back some units or even hours through the biggest thing is is if you know if you buy some of our tools it saves you a couple hours and you get a better product uh you know that's a win you know you just two hours of labor on your side of the fence uh and and then you can reuse it over and over again and your whole uh, you know, it's it's longevity, efficiency, it's smart thinking, and and that's the whole strategy. Uh, can somebody do it the hard way? Sure, but that's the whole idea. Is we want to stop doing it the hardest way and have these solutions in place where you're like, oh man, just grab a template or grab this bit set that's already set up, and I'll talk more about that efficiency. So you just go, you can execute very quickly, and you know have that efficiency in your shop. All right. Um, um, can you give us a quick brief overview of what we're about to learn today before we give you the whole stage? Yeah, so I want to kind of focus on some of these handheld router techniques. You know, this is one of my favorite tools lately. Uh, imagine that. It's the smallest of all the routers, but it's cordless. And you know, there's actually a whole line of them from Milwaukee, DeWalt, uh, you know, Bosch, uh, we just have Makita because we're kind of locked into their battery system. I think Milwaukee makes a great product and others do. Uh, it's not that I'm partial to this, but I do I do like the Makita products and I have good luck with them. But the idea is to use this hammer and do really cool designs that are flat. So we're not adding Bondo. So for example, if you look at some of these panels I'm going to show you, the you know the execution on them is super cool we're adding very very little body filler if any and that's just a piece of mdf that's a four inch mdf and my thing is to make a flat panel have multiple elements and i mean the elements of carpet aluminum different colors of vinyl quick we call it production high end we're doing really high end work on a production level and it's super fast you know and i'll cut down when we get it we just built this in in our last class look how cool that, that that is but there's i mean it's very very simple that quarter inch mdf brian I, I, i'm trying I'm to stop you there like you're, I, what you're, we're doing you're wetting my appetite i don't even understand how you could take a piece of material and come up with this i think we're about to experience that for me it's just mind-blowing stuff um, I say we get into it and give Brian his stage, Jaron. What do you think? So we could find out what these tools can do and why fabricators need to know about them and have them in their arsenal. I, I say we let him go at it. Let's we do got it. it. We got to get the dog unleashed out of the cage and like go <laughs> because he's ready to go. So Brian, you have the stage, sure. We're ready to learn. Okay. Let's go. All right. So uh you know kind of the first show you guys is a template system uh that that we've come up with it's actually a, over the past few years and it kind of starts with these arc templates this was actually the first template uh that i designed 18 years ago and this is a variation of that so we were the originators of these arc templates okay an arc template it's a it's actually called a true arc so this is a gigantic segment of a circle. So if you took this and continued it, it would make a circle. So it's a true arc. It's not a spline where it's just kind of a, you know, multiple arcs put together. Uh, and what makes this unique is it's got these center lines and even quarter lines. I don't know if you can see those indentations in there, but that helps you line it up. The ends are perpendicular by design. So it's a true 90 on the corner and that's what you want for these arcs. Now, we have a lot of different variations. I think I have six other sets of arcs that we have big big ones, small ones, and they all do different things. But these are special because they actually fit together. They actually have a positive and negative, we'll call it, okay? And that's the positive radius of this template and the negative combining to this, and they fit together and they meet together on those center lines. And it even has a number right here. So it says 26 and 26. Well, that's half of the diameter. So that would be, you know, double that, you know, 24 or 48. That's a 48 inch circle. If you can imagine, that's how big the circle is. So that's indicating the radius on there. And you would just match 
these up if you want those to mate together. Now, so that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea, and they're they're good size. They're about 24 inches long. But what we're really talking about is this center portion of this. We we this is on here by design, and it actually is a track for that handheld router to ride on. So it gives us a little channel for that. It's a five eight slot for that guided bushing in there to run in there. And what's cool is we can change that bit out to be all kinds of different stuff. And that's what we're going to do a live demo on today. So I'm just kind of want to build a case for these arc templates. I think it's a set of eight and there's actually some straight versions of it as well. So if you want to just do some clean lines down the center or something, that's what the slot is in the middle. The type of plastic we use, and I've done a lot of research, guys. We've had this same plastic for 18 years, and there's a reason why. It's type 1 PVC. It's unbreakable. It will bend, but the, the reason why we like it is it's smooth. It has a smooth finish. You can almost see that sheen, and that way you don't have to double up the tape. If you're using a, a substrate that has a textured surface on it, it just doesn't make sense for a template. You want something that has a smooth surface so we can have the most surface area for our two-sided tape to, to adhere to. Uh, and so that's why you see, you know, I would say, you know, most shops uh, in North America are using our templates. And this is why right here. And, and I tell you what, I mean, we sell thousands and thousands of these guys. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's a really good substrate. It machines nice and the edge quality is phenomenal. So let's kind of get into some examples of this, uh, you know, here is the actual tray and I'll, I'll switch the camera in just a second on our sky cam but this is a tray that, that goes along with this set and others uh, so there's actually a few other uh, things in this family but you have all these guided bushings right here that it tells you what size uh, the offset is and then you have a selection of five different bits and i'll talk about the bit geometry in just a second it's nice it just keeps everything organized if you take one out you know that that one is missing so everything has a home again we go back to that efficiency is having things on trays uh and you know this is another product that we've pioneered that you know that we were the first to bring to market with a tray system and it also has brackets for slat wall or grid wall that's engineered specifically for our trays so you know if you guys you see some of these shops where there's just rows and rows of trays that's why is because it's it just builds that efficiency. It gives a home for all of our bits and tools. So our project today is going to be this panel right here. Now, uh, what's cool about this is I've got it halfway built. So I want to show the carpet, the you know the V groove transition right here, uh, and then you know this top rail, and even some of these you know these three segments in the middle. Uh, this side is raw. And I'll show you the differences and, and why we do that and how to seam it. But what's really cool is this panel actually is held in with magnets. It all comes apart very easy. And, you know, for serviceability, it's kind of nice to have, you know, everything come apart. So the magnets are a big deal. We use them a lot and uh, you don't have to have that many. That actually is quite a bit. But uh, it makes it really nice for servicing panels, uh, hiding mounting screws, uh, or just having access points. But it's nice. But this entire panel was built with just a couple of these. That's it. So, uh, you know, if you could imagine just one set of templates I could build an entire car with, it happens all the time. I have guys coming back and like, hey, I use the number two and number three arc template. And I built this entire hot rod with just two templates. So you'd never know that. But if you break it down, this is how all automobiles, automobiles are, you know, they're they're using these true arc, uh, you know, styling. If it's a hood, if it's a curve, it's a it's a dash, uh, a fender, whatever. Uh, it's it's similar geometry. So let's break this part down here. So I want to just kind of do a little live demo and show you guys some of the cool techniques with this and why. Why, why do you, we use certain type of, types of bits and what makes sense for those? So let's, let's kind of switch gears here. I'm going to change the camera and see if I can get this to uh, um, shine down your sky cam, if you will. And this will broadcast right on our table if I can get this thing set and go to this camera. There we go. 
All right, so if you guys see our little workbench here, this is our router table. Uh, you know, we got our router lift. That we have an insert that fit. This comes out, and you can put an insert in here, and it becomes a dust collection table. It actually is kind of bigger. Maybe uh, I can have one. Grab me. Uh, it's called the dust mite. So you could actually do this router work right on your router table and still utilize your dust collection. But what I want to show you is this right here. So this is that one corner, or that one section of that panel that we just did. It's a piece of three quarter inch MDF. And we're going to two side tape it to, to the table and kind of give you just a little snapshot of that. I'll do just a quick little router and show you guys some of the geometry. I think it's, it's, it's cool to take these flat panels and give them some life without adding fiberglass and tons of body filler and uh you know if we do body filler i'm going to tell you what it's probably not more than a quarter inch high because i hate sanding i'm i love to sand but i hate sanding and you know what i mean by saying that so uh here we go so uh juan just brought this for me this is that dust mite if you guys are interested in checking this out so this is the top all these holes kind of graduate to larger holes uh and then if you look at the back side of this look at this geometry uh, that fits in the router table. So you take that lift out, the lift comes out, and then this fits in, and now you have a downdraft sanding table. It's really a cool and clever design. So let's keep rolling here. All right, so we're going to use these these arcs, and if if I set it up correctly, you can see right there, you know, it says 24, 26, and then the 26 are paired, and then it goes to 28. Uh, you know, and that just tells me how I can kind of mesh these two together. I'm going to show you guys this first set right here. So we'll we'll need to tape on both sides. Just use some half inch template tape and put it on generously. If you do little sections, it's fine. You know, if you're trying to conserve it, but I find you know it's it's it, actually if it does move, that's going to cost you more time. So we want to tape it well. And you do need it on both sides. If it was just, if it didn't have that channel in the middle, you wouldn't have to do this much tape. I'm going to set this on my panel that I've already routered. Okay. So now I've kind of set up this little track here. Let's talk about our bits before we go any farther. And now you can kind of see. And I'll bring these up to the camera. Uh, so this bit right here is it's called a bull nose. It's a half inch bull nose, and we're actually going to have a whole bunch of stuff coming out based off of these bulldoze bits. So that gives you a really cool channel. It's, you want a router basically about an eighth of an inch down or, or less uh, with this bit right here. This is called uh, a flat bottom V bit. Um, and we love this, it's a flat chamfer. If you look at it, it's kind of hard for it to focus on there, but it doesn't go to a point. It actually has the center of it goes flat and that makes it so much nicer to vinyl wrap. So if, when it goes to a point, it actually makes it more difficult to, you know, get that vinyl to tuck all the way down into that channel. So that little flat bottom makes a big difference. And then we go at eighth inch spiral, three sixteenths and quarter. They all have a purpose. So if I'm going to do vinyl and carpet, I go eighth inch. Uh, if I'm going to do maybe a thicker carpet and a vinyl, I'll do maybe a three sixteenths or carpet on carpet or a suede. So it just gives you a deeper channel and you probably go an eighth, maybe even three sixteenths deep. And all those bits do different things. And I'll show you that in just a second. But I just want to show you. And then you can see all the geometry on those trays. So it actually goes like that. So, all right. So I, I again, I, I always like to kind of build a case and tell, uh, you know, our viewers what we're doing before we kind of get into it. So now we've got this guy. So here's our bit. We've got that flat channel. Uh, flat chamfer bit right here loaded up with that 5 8 collet. And I, you know, one thing you want to do is make sure that that lock nut is super tight on the inside there. Uh, actually, I usually take it off, put some channel locks on there, and just make sure that that brass thing, uh, the brass nut on there is super tight. This has an LED, so it's kind of two stage. It turns the LED tells you that it's on, and then then you go. Okay. I'm not, this is not very deep, so we're gonna just kind of ride this in the channel and I'll just pull it towards me nice and easy. So 
So there's our channel. Usually I'll just do one pass. I, I can't lift it up because it is stuck down, but that's a that's a beautiful pass, eighth inch deep, nice channel, and that'll give us a nice texture or channel and dimension in our vinyl. So just enough so it doesn't make it flat. I just, you know, I just can't stand. It's just my pet peeve to just wrap a panel in flat. You can add some dimension to it so easily and charge, you know, $50, $75 for that, for just what I did right there. How cool is that simple technique? Now, the next thing I want to show you, so we've kind of shown two things so far, the arc templates, the tray, and all these, you know, these bits. The third component of what I'm going to show you is this. This is kind of new. This is that same thing, but we've added a guide to it. So the guide helps you balance this. You know, who's ever been routering? And, you know, I could take this and router against this edge, but I have a high chance of this thing tilting. Say, so, I mean, I can do it, but a lot of times if I tilt even just once, then I have to come back and add body filler. And the whole idea is to not have to do that. So if we can add this handle and stabilize it, so it it gives us a nice uh, base on there. And we have these uh, for all of the handheld, the major brands out there. So it's Porta Cable, DeWalt, Milwaukee, Makita. Uh, that's it. I'm looking for Juan for, <laughs> he's telling me uh, if I got it right. So, you know, we, we've got a, you know, a fair amount of, of applications for them and we sell quite a bit of these. So I'm gonna just get this set up, you know, about like this, if you guys can see the bit, there we go. It's about an eighth of an inch and not much. And I just want to have that. So yeah, I have stability and I could just come in and do the same thing. So let's just do this guide on here again. And... So there's that. So I'm able to use both edges, this inside track and this outside track. And you, you can kind of see why, you know, if I want to add another one, I could just keep continuing to do that. Isn't that cool? So this track right here, this is where I would change bits and I'd come back and I would do an eighth inch cut and we would just cut this right across here so i'm going to cheat a little bit and make this a little bit like a cooking show just so we don't waste a bunch of time but this is what it would look like if you know finished so we've got the two channels that we just cut just like i told you and then you've got that eighth inch channel there and the eighth inch channel allows me to put carpet on this edge and vinyl on this edge and let me fast forward to of course our cooking show and you can kind of see here so there there's your cut so the carpet tucks in here the vinyl tucks in here <sighs> a little dusty but you guys can see i mean it adds a massive amount of, of different element to that so very cool but that's what that eighth inch channel does so eighth inch to seam carpet and vinyl are two lines here it's super easy and uh you know it's a great way to add dimension to your panels very quickly and not take up a bunch of time and you can charge for it you absolutely have a little prop like that up front so you can show your customers but anyway i'll just peel this off here's here's a couple of tips for you on the cleanup is i like to peel the tape peel one piece and then you can actually use that we'll water it up in a little ball and press it down and that rips up any other pieces of tape and you know we'll make like a little little ball that by the end of the, the project you'll have like a softball basically <laughs> but uh it works really good and then you can use your pry tool or whatever and peel this up same thing just peel this and and away you go but there's your piece in that cool we just did that live for you guys so it's really a simple simple way for you to add some dimension to it so let's show a few other things Ben, how are we doing on our time? All right. So here's my two routers. I actually have three to four. <laughs> you can never have too many routers. Let me show you guys.
is another example here. This, I'm going to keep that sky cam on and show you another thing that we actually just did this in our last class. So this will give you another example. I know guys like they love examples. So this panel right here is kind of a different application. If you guys have this template, anyone watching on this, this is our GT template and that's a section of it. So if you look at that section, let me see if I can pull it. There you go. So the, how this was done is we did same thing, took this and actually ran this channel down here, routed this edge and stopped. And then I slid this again and routed it a second time, routed this and stopped. Okay. And then I took one of the longer arcs. We actually had an arc template. I'm going to just use a straight one for an example and did the same thing here. So ran this, changed the bit, did that eighth inch cut straight down, boom. And now you can see we've got those two lines right here, This these kind of the design elements, and then that one eighth inch slot right there for the carpet. So there's a couple nuggets there. So, you know, let me just grab that eighth inch bit so you guys can have a reference. There's that eighth inch bit, okay? It's probably an eighth inch down, eighth inch wide. That's about, that's all you need. So when I upholster this, I'll mask this side off. And well, I usually do the vinyl first. So I'll, I'll mask off my carpeted edge. So no glue gets on the side and I'll tuck that vinyl down in there. You know, you can just tuck it with your tuck tool like this tuck that vinyl down into there and you've got glue on this side, vinyl on the side, and then you're going to mask off this side. And so no glue gets on the vinyl and then tuck the carpet in here, come in with your razor blade. And I'll just give you a quick demo. You've got the carpet overhanging now and you just want to run that blade straight down that channel. Don't tilt it. Don't try to cut it at an angle. Just run it straight through. And this is your finished product. So, I mean, here you go. This is, you know, we added a couple other things here, but that is basically the exact same panel. And look at the detail. It's a little dusty from, you know, our router work. But uh, this, I added some aluminum. And, you know, we'd love to add that little stitch. Just a little tiny top stitch. It's a, it's a top stitch where we're, we're doing, we're sewing the maroon and that black vinyl together and it's just on that little section right here and it just makes it have that oe look it's super cool but i mean look guys it, you know it, it this does have a little bit of body filler not much maybe like a quarter of an inch like i told you and it's it just makes all the difference in the world uh here's some other examples as well so same same thing just a little bit different design but you can see by adding just a small amount, it makes a huge, huge difference. So, uh, you know, I hope I'm giving you guys some ideas on some of your builds and ways to make things faster, efficient, more efficient, and, uh, you know, just have uh, kind of a better look to them. All right, so let me show you our next thing. So our next design is going to be this this is going to be our smart ruler and i think we actually have a video on this this is one of my favorite tools right here and it would be hard to do this you know i guess without this you know could you do it i guess but this this definitely makes it a lot easier what makes it nice is we have the straight edge right here and the straight edge it actually can pivot on here and you can change the angle and I'll tell you, anything less than 45 is really what you want because it makes the grid more desirable. It makes those diamonds, uh, you know, kind of stretch out. So the the idea is you're going to come in with that same bit. Imagine that, right? So we've already got this bush this bushing guide system here, and I'm going to I'm not going to do this because it'll it will take a minute. And I just we are in a time budget here, but we're going to router this 
and run that router right in those tracks just like that. Once I finish all of these and I graduate, I take this straight edge off, I take these off, and then we flip it to the opposing side. And we come in and do the opposing edges. So what that does, well, it gives us something pretty cool here. It gives us a whole variety of shape. And that's how you're seeing a lot of these designs out there. Look at how cool that is. And that that's probably at a 30 degree angle. So if you guys, I'm just trying to show you guys up close, um, you know, how cool that can look. And then it, when you vinyl wrap it, look at that. It really gives you a cool look. You could even sew through it. So if you do this on plastic, like a Sintra, uh, you know, I have two industrial sewing machines. We actually teach it in our class. Uh, and we taught it at the expo. We had a whole class on sewing. And guys, look, we're not trying to make seats and get really complicated. We're just doing French seams, double top stitch, single top stitch, and add these the stitch element to it that you see in a lot of high-end cars where it just makes the install so much more premium and you can charge that top rate for it. But we're really, all we're doing is doing straight stitch lines. It's not complicated, but look at the back. Isn't that cool? So I'm sharing some little secrets with you guys. But all of that was developed off of this Smart Ruler XL. So this is on a promo as well. It works in conjunction with the, just what I showed you guys, and it's super cool. All right. So our last kind of component here is is really kind of inspired, um, you know, from the automobile you know, some, some, some different automobiles and it's a, it's a sweet template. We love this design. I want to show you how this was made. This is a different application. And I think I shared this earlier, but what it has, it's a little dirty. Like I said, we, we're, we're making some dust over here, but you could see some of these elements here. This is actually aluminum that's bent in here. It's got that, this is that um, half round that we were talking about earlier. So this is that bull nose bit. Instead of the V groove, you can do this, this bull nose bit right here and press that vinyl in there. It's a really cool effect. This aluminum right here, this channel, that's when you'd want to use that 3 16 bit, okay? Because I got a, a 30 second on this side, a 30 second on this side, and then the the ch the actual aluminum is eighth of an inch so you know two thirty seconds and an eighth that's three sixteenths so it's going to actually pressure fit nicely and then what size do we use here eighth inch so you got an eighth inch bit a three sixteenths and then right here this is a bull nose and look at the colors you know so you're going carpet dark brown aluminum and then light gray four different materials all in one shot no body filler. It's just a really simple, cool way to do this. Now, how did we get the shape? So this is where our promo comes in. Is it's the Predator template. And it has those really aggressive lines where it dips right here. It comes out. Uh, you know, Lexus kind of has a, a grill like this. It's my, You could say it's kind of inspired by maybe a Lexus grill, but it's not the same. It's just inspired by it, but it does give you a super cool look. And you would just take, use one of these templates. And again, you're going to use this guy to come in and run along that edge and get that profile, flip it, and then you can make your own shape. So this guy is on sale and you can use sections of it. You don't have to use the entire piece. You can just use parts and pieces of it. It's very cool and it just saves you time. So, you know, and we're, we're all about doing smart, clever designs that increase your efficiency and you can make money. That's what it's all about is the dollars. So last thing I want to show you guys is this. Here is a couple of things we can talk about right here. Are, these are different elements. Those are the same arcs. You, see, you notice the arc. 
but inside here it has this big cove bit i'm just like back that up a little bit it has that cove bit and then if you advance you know you could see some of these these elements right here and even this one uh you know it just looks super cool but that's that that's that 3 16 bit in the center there same bit i've been showing you i'm just trying to give you guys as many examples as as possible to get you to think differently so we want to do it smart we don't, we don't want to use body filler or fiberglass if we don't have to sometimes you do but it's not my go-to and uh you know years ago that would be the first thing that i would probably pick up is like let's just fiberglass this entire thing and now i want to think smart i want to think efficiency hey i've got two hours to build a, a really nice panel that i want to charge three four or five hundred dollars for and be done in one day uh and that's the idea is is high efficiency with the right tools and i think that we can help you guys with that for sure so uh let me switch back and if and ben if you guys want to come back on i think that that kind of wraps up most of my demos here for you Brian, yes. Can you just come on every day on CMA and give a little demo like this? This is just so much fun to watch and see. <laughs> you know what? It, like when you first show me that final product, I'm like, "There's no way!" Like that is looks like it's out of a Mercedes Benz or something. You know what I mean? Like that took some complicated, like German engineering, you know, <laughs> craziness. And then you show me one template and a router and that's what it is it's 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 hard to believe that's all it is until you explain it i don't know jaren that's what i felt no that, that's how i feel with most of brian's panels it's like oh that's a lot of body filler and like he says he barely uses any body filler it's unbelievable uh so okay, hold on i have a whole bunch of notes here brian give me a second to get my stuff ordered in the meantime while i get my notes together brian you mentioned we had a video about that ruler kit yeah we do have a video so i yeah. want to play that video let the guys kind of absorb what okay. that's all about. When we come back, I'm going to bombard you with a whole bunch of questions. Let's go ahead and roll the tape.
Um, I'm going to give kudos to whoever is part of your team that does these 3D rendering uh, videos. It is so descriptive. Like, I, yeah, next level stuff. Do all the tools have videos that go with it, Brian? Just curious. We're trying. We're trying. We have about six or seven videos like that. I mean, so. I'm not going to say it was better than you doing it live, but it's certainly <laughs> – I could freeze that and totally follow along, you know what I mean, with every step. Um, Good and make that happen. So, uh, Jared, I'm going to give you the opportunity because I got a lot to say, so I'm going to let you go. Uh, what was your favorite uh, demo or piece and uh, or anything you want to comment on? I, I definitely think my favorite piece, it's probably one of my favorite pieces ever since I've been dealing with Brian's stuff is that smart ruler technology. Just that that diamond pattern, like mm. to, to look at, make it look so simple in that video to do it where I just want to, make diamond shapes in all my panels because <laughs> it just really brings brings up that level and that like that diamond pattern is so common in hot rodding now it's so common in high-end interiors and that's definitely why brian picked that pattern but to find an easy way to do it it's just great you could almost just sit in your shop in downtime and just put diamonds in all your mdf and then when you're making panels you just have diamonds everywhere when Brian started with that ruler, I wasn't sure what he, where he was going with it. Like, I don't know. Like, when do we actually do lines like that? You know what I mean? And then when he crisscrossed, I was like, oh, that's what he's trying to do. My comment on the diamond pattern is, you know, I think you nailed it, Brian, when you said that little added value visual aesthetic for a customer means upgrade, means a higher price that he would pay to have that type of finish versus just a, you know, a blank canvas. I mean, anybody could do the blank canvas, but if you're the only shop that could come out with that pattern and then now add layers to it, like you said, Brian, you know, the vinyl and the stitch, I mean, that's just, that's premium and people will pay for premium, right? 100%. That's what it's all about. Top yeah. dollar for for the- Top dollar. Top dollar for the, the least amount of work. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad philosophy. You know, um, we're not trying to be lazy, but we're just trying to do it smart. So we're it's smart work. Efficient. You know, we're, we're, we're efficient. We're clever. Mm -hmm. We want to be just, we want to maximize every minute in the day. And that's, that's what I look at. We all fight the clock and, you know, hey, if we got tools that make us save that time, like I mentioned earlier, uh, that's a win. Can I comment on one of my favorite pieces? Um, so I love how you use the, I believe it was a one eighth inch bit to make that groove so you could slide two different materials together and have a, a, like that seamless connection between the two materials. What I thought took it to that next level is when you went to that 316 with that aluminum trim. Mm. See that, like when you introduce alum aluminum into fab like that, that's just, again, that's like diamond, right? It's like next level. Like it's if you're the sexy. only guy in town, like it's so sexy. It's ridiculously sexy. And it's just a thin piece of aluminum, but it makes all the difference in the world. And all it was was a bit. I mean, couldn't I cannot believe it. That that's just mind blowing. Thank you. Thank you. Um I want to get into the head of Brian Schmidt a little bit here. So, uh, you know, when fabricators, when installers, when dealers are looking at your products, can you talk to us a little bit about the process and the energy and the and the mind and the time that goes into developing all these type of products? So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a lot. And, you know, Ben and I, Ben, you, you and I know that uh, you know, I've been at this a long time and, and, you know, started a long time ago. And my background is really mechanical engineering. I, that was my, that was going to be my job as a grown up. And I just never did that grown up job. And so I went to school and, you know, it's a cat has always been my thing, even back in high school. So, you know, we were early adopters of technology and CNC laser stuff before everybody uh, had theirs. And, you know, I just, I really never made it really public but that technology has always trickled into this and i think of that when i when i fab when if you're building analog or if you're building building digital you still have to blend the two worlds together and uh you know i feel like that you know we really try to push that envelope uh you know and i collaborate with some of my friends uh some of the stuff that uh is you know we we talk about together or we even share ideas uh you know so 
uh, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. Our community is awesome, and uh, it's just going to continue to get better and better. Uh, and I, you know, like I said, just having smart design is so important for, uh, you know, the way you work, the way you execute, and the way you charge for your, your you know, your customers. So, and this is going to continue to evolve. I mean, you know, trends as they come, style, fashion. You know, as as the automotive industry and design continues to move forward, obviously, you're going to be there to continuously adopt what the latest trends are and come up with solutions for it. Always, always, always a step ahead. All right. Um, let's let's back up out of the 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 um, I guess the the field for a second. So I'm a fabricator, Brian. You had me at template. You know, your first arc, I got it. Uh, what opportunities? So we we've talked about Master Tech Expo. We've talked about all these great mobile solution tools that are available either directly through you in the states or through BB Distribution in Canada. Uh, if I want to learn more, what other opportunities are there that I could catch more of more Brian this? So we we have several options. Uh, you know now now more than ever uh you know right behind me the, this modern fab is a current class that we're running uh this year and we're only doing a few uh it's very special and we have you know guests come in and it's it's just that it's a modern way of using technology we do share some digital stuff some analog stuff stitching all kinds of different elements uh lighting uh, blended in this class, and that's an awesome opportunity for everybody to come to. Um, and we welcome anyone globally to come to our class. Uh, uh, an easier and probably more accessible way is School of Fab, and you know you can see our our little logo here. That is uh, something that Mark and I do from Car Audio Fabrication, and we typically do it once a month. We you know, and it's it's usually the first part of each month. And we'll do all kinds of tidbits and stuff live. It's a legit show where we're, I'm showing some live demo. I usually build something from start to finish, um, probably 30 to 45 minutes of actual fab time where we do it accelerated. So that's another option too. If you guys wanted to come to that, uh, you can you can tune in. It's free if you want to watch it live. If you want to watch it after the fact, you can be a Patreon and get all the episodes and upload them as well. So it's kind of like if you got all the episodes, it'd be a gigantic training for you. Um, and, uh, you know, we'd love for you guys to be a part of that. And then I think the third and last way is to come to, and I, I feel like everybody should come to the expo. It is the event of the year. I'm telling you, there is going to be so much knowledge and brain trust there. Imagine if this was uh, drag racing or Indy 500 or NASCAR and all the crew chiefs went to one place and shared all of their race techniques and how they tune their engine. That's what's going on here. The tuners shared their golden secrets in one place for a very short amount of time. And you get to see guys doing live build off, just thrashing on a stage. And I have about three other elements that I cannot tell you that make this a complete circus ole. <laughs> I was going to let you go and see how far you're going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've yeah. got to come to the show. Don't miss it. You will hate yourself if you don't. Can, can so, I add one more it. thing, Brian? Can I add one yeah. more thing? Don't forget you are so, rubbing shoulders with the best fabricators on the planet in one place in one time. Let's not forget that part. Yes, this is true. Hey, we all put our pants on the same way, and uh, some just have more tricks than others. So there you it's go. a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, while I have you on, Brian, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you this question. What advice do you have for aspiring fabricators or veteran fabricators, for that matter, to help best maximize their skills, improve on their skill set, and, and and to incorporate the tools that you that you make for them? So my best advice is you have to invest in your in yourself. Your skill set is not going to advance by itself. It's only going to advance by the time you put into making yourself better. So if that's reading, watching ways to learn and then practicing, you really got to practice and execute all the time and try new things. Get out of your comfort zone. So don't just keep building the same thing over and over again. Don't just keep doing a deck and two. Get out of that comfort zone and push yourself. That's how you grow. That's how you learn. And that's how you go to that next level. If you just stay comfortable, you're never going to get out of that comfort zone. So by pushing yourself, you're going to want to aspire to grow, build bigger stuff, charge more, build your clients, 
uh, your, your client base. And it's so satisfying. You know, I started with very humble beginnings and I, I, I never forget that. And, uh, you know, we would stay late and learn stuff. I'd go to every manufacturer training just because I wanted to suck up every bit of knowledge I could. And that's how you, you learn. That's how you get ahead. That's how you go to that next level. And whether you're working for somebody or your shop manager, or you have your own business, uh, you know, this industry is a lot of fun. Uh, you know, it's, I think it's one of the few that you can just have a blast being creative, making music with gadgets and cool cars, and we can just build cool shit all the time. Who gets to do that? And we make money. We do. So, yeah, we, <laughs> we do. And, you know, you want to make it fun, but also it's got to be a continual progression of self-education and pushing yourself to that next level. That's my advice. You heard it here, guys. You heard it here. Brian Schmidt, thank you so much for coming in, sharing us, again, your knowledge, being so generous with that, and, of course, uh, showing us a couple of the tools that you, you guys, the installers, definitely need to order and get your hands on. Brian, until next time, of course, I'm going to squeeze you every single time from here until Master Tech. You can count on it. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you. Take care, sir. Bye-bye. All right, Jaron. That was an amazing demo, first and foremost. One of the best I've seen, anyhow. Uh, right. What news do you have for uh, shops and installers that might have tuned in right here to the end? So Brian's going to be running a special in the U.S. Uh, in Canada, we will be running similar special with them. Keep an eye out on our VBE news going out, our social media channels as well. And CMA will also help us out in sending some out to the dealers as well on specials on some of the tools that Brian talked about for sure, the must needs of the shop, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So make sure to stay tuned uh, for all these specials that uh, both Brian and Jaron are referring to. I wanna make one comment here and that is, you know, uh, Brian is an incredible resource um, for the industry and the products that he comes up with come from uh, a place of experience, a place of business ownership and a place of fabrication. Uh, and he's been doing it for 18 years. He's the original, and there's a reason for it. And I think there's a lot to be said about that. If you want to learn more about their products, you see on the screen right there, mobile solutions-usa.com is where you're going to go and peruse for all the products that they offer. And if you're a Canadian dealer, well, you don't have to look too far, bbdistribution.ca. Give them a call. They've got the entire line of mobile solutions products in stock. Jaron, thank you so much for joining us once again for this one. Thanks for having me, Ben. Take care. All right. On that note, make sure you continue tuning in to CMA Networks right through till Friday, July 8th, as we continue for audio accessories, a whole new grouping of customers and brands that we're going to go through and go one-on-one -on -one each and every single day as we go through the jungle of mobile audio accessories. And if you haven't already, make sure you visit our website, cmanetworks.com, where you'll find this and hundreds of more videos covering everything you need to know in 12 volt electronics today. Search by brand, search by category, or check out our trainers such as Brian, who has his own play playlist on there as well. I wanna give a shout out to Brian for joining us today and giving us this phenomenal demo on this workshop. And uh, stay tuned, we got lots more where that came from. This is CMA Workshop presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Stop it. Yeah. Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's left on the radio. Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?